We start with an empty Blazor WebAssembly application. The only thing I changed is the app CSS, just added some stylings here. And this is how this app looks like. And now the first communication way I want to show you is parent to child. And this works pretty much like the following. So we just create first a new folder called this thing shared. And now let's add another component called parent, and then also another component called child for our parent to child communication. Now, what I want to do is I want to use parameters in these components for the communication way parent to child, and then maybe to another component that is below the child. So all these descendants then and actually when we have a look at the index razor here, when I now add the parent component, then this is also already a parent to child communication, right? So let me just fix this thing here real quick. And at the using we're using empty project here. So this comes not out of the box in this case. And now the parent is here. So what I want to uh, tell you with that is that we can actually already somehow use the parent to child communication within the index razor file and the parent component. But stay with me here, we will also make use of the other relationships here. So this is why we also need the child razor component. Let me just rename this real quick to index razor. So we absolutely know what this thing is that we will see in a minute in Chrome. And now regarding the parameters, I want to give this parent a name. So we go to the parent razor component here. And now let's just add a property with prop, we hit tab twice. And now this is a string with a name and very important, the parameter attribute. So this is now how this stuff works. And to also display the name, let me just add a diff here real quick. This is the parent. So we leave the H three here. This is nice. And then we also add a span, just saying hi, I'm and then name, come on. And then we uh, just add a new line here. All right. So this looks nice, we rebuild this thing. And let's have a quick look. There we are index razor parent hi I'm. So now what I have to do, see that we have no name here. What I have to do now is simply say in the index razor, of course, name. And then for instance, Joel, and with that, hot reload at its best, we see parent hi, I'm Joel. All right. And now within the parent, I also want to add well, you guessed it, the child component. But first, let me also add another component here. Again, we will make use of this stuff later. And not only do we want to set the name of the parent, but also the name of the child, right? So this would then be the child name. And now in our index razor, we say child name, you see this works with couple of parameters, you can add as many as you want here. And this then would be Sarah, for instance, we save that. And now for this child here, we also just use a parameter. So again, first a diff, so it looks a bit, a bit better, a little bit maybe. And here we add another span where we say, Hey, there, I'm, and again, I just want to add a name. So this would be then name again, and another property as a parameter, string name, parameter. All right. And now here, yep, I'm not done yet. For the parent, let me add the child down here with name now at child name. All right. So let's save everything again. Run this. 
and there we are. So now we've got our index razor, we've got the other parent, hi, I'm Joel, and this child here, hey there, I'm Sarah. So parent to child communication, even with three components, works just fine, no issue here at all. But now what about the other way around? Let's say this child wants to say hi, for instance, to the parent, but how do we communicate this? We need event callbacks. So now we go back to the child here. And also as a parameter, we now add an event callback. So another property, event callback. And if we also want to pass an argument, for instance, and then here we define the type of this argument. And let's just say we call this event, say hi, and in here again, this is a parameter. And now when we invoke this event, the parent component needs to react to this event, right? So let's just say we add a button like that, for instance, maybe like that. And now here again, a button that, well, just looks like that. Let's just say hi. And now here on click, we want to raise the event. So at on click, we now say, we want to call a function here. So this should be with a parameter. So, so this should be a, a Lambda expression. Our event is say hi. And now here we say invoke async with our message, which is simply hi. Now the parent has to react to this thing. So what we can do is we go to the parent component and here we now say a little span again, which says my child says and then the text, and then we will add this variable in a minute. This is the child text again, new line here. And down here now, we first add the text, so string child text is first nothing maybe. And the next thing is we have to again react to the event and for that we need another function. So here for the parameter say hi, we can call the function called child set hi for instance. And now here we say private void child set almost child set hi. Uh, we have a parameter, so this should be our message. And now here child text message. All right, let's see how this looks now. Here we see my child says nothing. This is the initial value. And now when we click this button, we actually want to see hi. And this works great. So with that, we already got two cases covered, parent to child, child to parent. Real quick, the .NET Web Academy is now open for enrollment, but only for two weeks and spots are limited. So if you want to join this four to six week program where you pretty much learn everything you need to land a job in the .NET web development world, speaking of web APIs, entity framework, code first migration, SQL server, Blazor web assembly, Git, Azure, whatnot, then please check out the link in the video description below because with that link, you get a huge discount on this program and you get also early access as soon as a new chapter has been uploaded and you get also access to the community of the .NET Web Academy. So please check out the link. Thank you very much for considering. And now back to the tutorial. I know there's only one case left and that'll be, well, let's say component to component or parent to parent sibling to sibling, whatever it is, because now when we say we add another parent here, for instance, like that, and in this case, this is Anna and Ellie, for instance, well, we've got them here. And let me just reload this. Now we see nothing here, we say hi, nothing here, we can say hi. 
But what if we also, let's say, broadcast a message? So a child says something like anybody here, and this message should receive both parents here, for instance, all right? Or both childs or whoever, both children, or whoever it is, maybe also the index razor, doesn't really matter. Well, for this, what we need, this is simply a service or a state. I usually call the service. You could also call it state. This is totally up to you. So again, I call the service. So my way for doing this would be creating another folder. So let's add a new folder here, call this services. And let's just call this thing a message service, for instance, or broadcast service, something like that. And what I usually do is regarding dependency injection that I create an interface and then an, ex an uh, implementation class that implements this interface. But to save you time, let's just create one class here, which is our message service. And we also register this thing. So in our program CS as a scoped service, builder services at scoped our message service that's the one all right so with that we know the service when we want to inject it and also let's add the uh not there the in the imports the um using directive for services message service all right well and now let's have a look at this service what do we need here well the first thing is an action because again we want to invoke an event in essence and for that now this would be a public event with the type action nullable and let's say set something now also what i want to use is a message so this would be in essence the last message of this broadcast or message service and the children in our example will use this message service and the parents will receive these messages so everybody knows what's actually going on and again let's just use a simple one here this is the message and in the beginning this is something like that for instance all right and the last thing is a method which will then invoke this event up here, set something. So let's say public void, say something, string message. And here our message is now the argument, of course. And down here now, this is important. We want to invoke our event. So this is now our service or state, right? Got this state here of this message. And now we inject this message service in both our components, the child component and the parent component. So up here, first we say inject message service, call this thing also message service and we add another button down here so this would be the mm, the simplest example really and let's say we call this say something all right well, we don't need this one here but then on click again a lambda expression and here now we call the message service with say something and the text would be anybody here and maybe we can also add our name and that's done like that all right okay stop it something is not done yet doesn't really matter so we've We've added another button and on click here, we say our message service should call the say something method with this parameter here, with this text. And again, when we have a look here, it is setting the message. All right, so this is publicly available. 
and we also invoke this event. And now maybe you already guessed it, the parent or whoever wants to receive this message now has to react to this event. So we go to our parent component and again, we inject the message service, call this message service, all right. And we add another span here where we say someone said something. And this is again from the message service, all right. But to update this message, because when we now start this, let's just have a look. When we start this, we see someone said, all right, and someone said, right? So here's the, the other parent, this is Anna, child is called Ellie. And now here we can say, say hi, hi. And also here, this is really just this one specific child. But if we call uh, or press now say something, well, we don't see the result, right? So nothing is actually happening, although we did something actually. So uh, we, we broadcasted the message, but we do not see it yet. So we need a receiver for this message. And how would we do that? Well, we call one of our lifecycle methods here in Blazor. We've got actually three on initialized, on parameter set, and on after render. And let's just say on initialized, we wanna subscribe to the said something, said something event of the message service. This would look like that. So we just call override and then, come on, almost over die. Not bad. And in here now on initialized, we say message service said something. See that this is our action event. And with plus equals now, we call state has changed. This is interesting, right? And if you do not know what this means, there it is, notifies the component that its state has changed. When applicable, this will cause the component to be re-rendered. This means that really we've got another state, the component should re-render, meaning that we will actually update this message here, this text, all right? And there's one more thing we should do to avoid any memory leaks. We also implement the iDisposable interface and unsubscribe from this event. So implements iDisposable, that's the one. And for that, we need the methods public void dispose. And in here, in essence, we do almost the same copy and paste this, but instead of plus equals, it's minus equals. So on this post, we unsubscribe. And again, something is not working here. All right, let's just see one more time. There's the app. Let me just reload this. So hi works. Hi works. Now drum roll, say something. Anybody here? I'm Sarah. All right. And anybody here, I'm Sarah. So already we've got the message. And when we test it with Ellie, we see Ellie here and Ellie up here. So this works just fine, but maybe you also want to get a message from a web service, for instance, or from a database. And for that, you may want to know how to use or implement all the CRUD operations in Blazor WebAssembly with the .NET Web API. If you want to know how to do that, you should definitely check out the video here on the screen.